This is Twit. So first of all, Franco, you're probably most known for your work uh, with the Franco Colonel. Um, for those who, who aren't aware, take a minute to explain uh, what motivated you to develop in this space and, and what exactly the Franco Colonel is. Um, so for now, Franco Colonel is a big project, um, mostly for Nexus phones. Recently for the OnePlus One, because it's almost a Nexus of some sort. Um, but before I go there, uh, it's basically a kernel replacement for those phones. Um, I get kernel so source code from Google, and then I do my own modifications and ship it to XDA developers and through my app so that people have more control over their phones, over their CPU, GPU, and some other features. And at the end, my, my goal is that people are happier about their phones. They feel more freedom and they have more battery, more performance, and they're happy and I'm happy as well. So <laughs> the, the title of the episode really should be happiness uh, because apparently sure. it's a theme here. Uh, <laughs> now, of course, you know, we've talked to developers on the past on the show and app development and kernel development are two completely different beasts that I have to imagine come with their own set of uh, unique challenges. Most developers that are watching this show are, are probably familiar with the challenges of developing apps, I would imagine. Uh, what would you say are a few of the main pain points when you're developing something like the kernel, uh, something that's so critical to the underlying system? Um, so the kernel is huge. It's um, composed by a lot of different components. And the biggest challenge, I guess, is that if you start in one point, like a subsystem like audio or video or CPUs, uh, you start somewhere and then you start tinkering with it. And then after a couple hours, you end up in other end of the kernel and doing something else because you found a bug previously. Then you go down that route and 10 hours after and you're messed. But also bigger pain is that we don't have the hardware and data sheets from all the vendors. So, for example, if you want to mess with the sound driver, you have to go manually and see what each component does or each register or just go one by one and hope for the best. So that's a big challenge sometimes. Or sometimes you don't understand the code that LG or HTC done or some other third-party vendor. So that's a big challenge. Yeah. For example... I've, I've been trying to work with the HTC One M8 kernel, uh, but even for the Google Play Edition device, I've been having problems getting Wi-Fi to work because the code is a mess. Everything is mismatched everywhere between Android and the kernel, and then it's hard. And you're, re I mean, I can only imagine you're basically reverse engineering um, what's what's there right now. Is it just you that, that, that's picking these apart? Because it sounds like such a manual process. Or do you have people that you're working with that kind of make it easier? Or you really just no, have no. to spend hours and hours yourself uh, going piece by piece and figuring it out? Well, there's two points in there. I do everything by myself. I don't have anyone helping me. But sometimes there are other developers that have done other works. And I can look what they've done, and either I can just do something called a cherry pick, where we can grab the code but still maintain all the credits for the developers, or you can read the code and learn from what they have done, and you can do something else based on that code. So it's not just me. There's a bunch of other people that contributed, even users helping me. So my user base is so big. Uh, that they they help me a lot, either bug reporting or sometimes someone gives me an idea or they build a couple of patches for me. So in the end, it's a community work. 